Well, I think it was very clear in our discussion today that a politician who doesn't pay attention to the, the politics is not going to get much accomplished in the way of policy. Uh, but I think that the, the trade-off is a lot more complex than it first seems. It's not just a matter of trying to do the right thing, but looking for the strategic possibility to, to do it. It's also understand that to be able to manage the politics, you need to address not just the politicians, but also the voters. And it's really important to try and create a constituency for good public policy. And that means having opportunities for people to understand it, to, uh, to learn about policy, and to perhaps be able to express their support for certain initiatives to those who will make the ultimate decisions. Well, you know, there are a number of different time horizons that people uh, look at, and obviously it's wonderful to be able to think a long way out, but as Kane said, in the long run, we're all dead. So uh, we do need to be realistic about uh, not just the time frame uh, that, that's practical, but the time frame where we have a reasonable certainty of what the circumstances are going to be. You want to think long term in the sense that you don't want to paint yourself into a corner, you know, that if something's going to happen. But the world always changes, and one of the, the constants of policymaking is crisis management and dealing with situations that were not anticipated um, or that you know, were possibilities but which, you know, where the odds of them happening were very small. I'll give you an example. Um, in the late 1980s, nobody anticipated the end of the Soviet Union. Uh, I was a Soviet specialist, and on one level I knew it couldn't last forever, but and, and I thought that, you know, the change would have to come from the top because there were not simply the, the vehicles for citizens to make the change. They didn't have arms. Um, they didn't have uh, organizational outlets. And in fact, the whole method of control there was to weaken the links between people. So it was very unlikely to happen that way. So when that, when that comes along, uh, you have to be able to respond to it. So I don't think it's correct to say that, you know, all policies can be made in the long term. But where you can and where you can see you know see out or see the possibilities or, or see that there's something that you want to protect against yes you should do it but sometimes even short-term policies are hard to explain to people are hard to get support for I think think tanks can make a difference and in a variety of ways first of all I think think tanks, and, and they come in all different shapes and sizes and purposes, and you know, some are much more specifically associated with a particular political viewpoint, like the Fraser Institute in Canada, or even the Canada West Foundation, which is very much you know, geared to kind of the West position in Confederation and uh, making sure that the West gets its, its due. So there are think tanks that have that, that kind of perspective. But um, I think in addition to fill in whatever role it is, and, and something like, like CG is, is a much broader based uh, a view, not partisan, not of a particular angle, but, but again focused on governance innovation. What are some of the new ways that we can use to do the things that governments used to do? And maybe how should we think differently about government? I mean, it has it, its framework. But I think in addition to the contributions that think tanks can make uh, towards specific issues of public policy, I think think tanks are part of a culture of reasoned and serious intellectual search and discourse. And I think that a lot of what think tanks can do in reaching out to the public, in convening people, in other words, to, to bring the public in, to, to hear the results of what's being done by the scholars and, and uh, uh, participants in, in the, the think tank, is very important for creating a kind of a foundation of understanding and uh, respect for the process of that kind of serious evidence-based evidence policy research. Because I think we have seen, and, and I, I see this in the United States today, that, um, that there are people in public life who actually, and people who support them, who actually denigrate this kind of rational, serious, uh, balanced, kind of open-ended uh, search for, for ideas. And it's remarkable that you actually have a candidate for the nomination of a major party, the presidential nomination, criticizing his own party for being a party against science. And so I think that what think tanks do, they represent a kind of culture, the culture of research, the culture of inquiry, the culture of debate, the culture of bringing people together 
to create the synergies that different perspectives on an issue can, can generate uh, and lead perhaps to new leaps of the mind. Uh, so I think that they are, uh, they are important on a lot of different levels.